Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at doing this in biro. Okay, so the principle is exactly the same. Um, the pencil and the biro work quite closely, um, as in the, the way that they the way that they perform. Um, the difference is that you have a lot more control with the pencil over the light to dark. With the biro, it's it's a little bit harder. So when you do this first box, you've got to be really careful with your biro. You're barely touching the surface, getting the lightest possible coating. Um, and with the biro, um, you want to try and space those marks out a little bit. I'm not sure that all biros are that keen on being used lightly, so they might not always um, come out quite as you anticipated. I think I'm just about getting enough out of this one here to be able to do that first box. And again, trying to keep within those lines. So I'm gonna do what I did before. I'm gonna do my lightest box first, and then I'm gonna just switch down to the bottom. And then I'm gonna do my darkest box. So I'm gonna go around these edges first, trying to keep it nice and neat. You know, if you do go slightly over the edge of your box, it's okay, it's, it's no big deal. Um, but you know, you do want to have it in your mind to try and keep within those edges. Keep these books looking really good. So I'm gonna use a little bit of cross hatching here, try and get myself a darker tone. And I'm gonna build on that cross hatching once I've got this first layer in. Now as I'm doing this, I can see that I've got some gaps. I'm not really happy with those. So in my head I'm thinking, right, well this is really just the kind of first layer. trying to fill up some of those white gaps and get that looking nicely covered. Really good dark tone. So as before, I'm gonna jump back up now to my second box and remembering what I said before, I'm going to try and keep this as light as the first one. Now, I think the biro is, is more challenging than the pencil. And in this case, unlike with the pencil where, you know, if, if the worst does happen and you do end up going much darker, you can, you can rub it out. With the biro, that is not the case. You know, once it's on, it's on. Um, and the only way really to rectify a mistake is to cut out a new square from a separate piece of paper and then redraw it onto there and stick it back on. Okay, so that's going to be my first, um, my first layer of shadow. And if I'm comparing these two boxes, then I would say that tonally they're probably pretty similar. So I feel like I can easily and comfortably go back over this again to try and get that next step down. So I'm just going to do that now.
and just as I'm finishing that I'm thinking yeah okay that's pretty good so exactly the same again I'm going to start this one I'm kind of pretty sure that I can afford to go a little bit heavier with my pressure now but I definitely don't want to go any darker than this box here just in case I do by accident I don't want it to be too dark I'm going to come over with my biro like that and then to, again tonally I think they're pretty similar so I'm more than happy to take this one down I'm going to go another layer over the top using pretty much the same pressure as I did before Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. There's a possibility that I might have gone a tiny bit too dark on this one. We'll have to see how it pans out with the next three. If I have gone too dark, that will give me an opportunity to show you what you can do if you do make a mistake. I think it's really important at this stage as well that you understand that the mistakes are, are really, really important. They're one of the most valuable learning tools that you have available to you. Um, it's only really when we make a mistake that we can start to look at how we made that mistake and understand how to avoid it in the future. Um, mistakes should be 100% embraced um, and it should be understood that without them, we won't ever really make the progress that we need to make. So I've finished that one and that's lighter than this box, so... Just going to come back over and take that down a bit. I've still got another two boxes to do, so at this point I don't want to get too dark, otherwise I'm going to start to struggle. Okay, I'm relatively happy with that. I may well come back to this box, but I think for the time being, I'm gonna leave it how it is, especially with two boxes still left to go. So with this one, I can afford to uh, start relatively heavy. So at this point, I think it's, it's probably good to tell you why we're doing this. So observational drawing is one of the kind of core skills of, of your art. It's certainly not the only type of art, but it does, it does give you a very good foundation for all of the other disciplines that you can explore. It may not be your strongest point, and that's absolutely fine. You might really enjoy another aspect of creativity, but it is a good skill to have, and it does really help you. And remember that observational drawing is very much open to interpretation. People see different things when they are drawing objects and they represent them in slightly different ways. Okay, so that's my next box and I think tonally this box is very similar to this box so I can afford to go a little bit darker on that. So as I've done before, I'm gonna take another layer of, of uh, shading over the top. At this point, I'm just gonna tidy up these edges a little bit. Bring that across there. I'm going to start going the other way now just to get that sort of slightly darker tone. Okay, so I'm relatively happy with that. Again, I think I might have a little bit too much of a leap between here and here and not enough of a leap between here and here. 
So my solution to that would obviously be to make this box ever so slightly darker. I'm not going to do that until I've put this last box in and I can have a proper look at it when it's finished. So again, I, I feel comfortable going to the same level in this box as the box above. So I'm actually gonna start this relatively heavy. Once again, trying to keep within those lines, but understanding that there might be a few occasions where I go over the edge. I think as well it's probably worth noting that this is very controlled. You know, I'm not scribbling on this page. This is a controlled drawing. You know, that I'm, I'm really working hard to try and keep it nice and neat, keep my presentation looking good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now then is start to go back the other way. I can definitely go darker on here. So when we're doing our observational drawings, we would use this tone um, in those drawings to start to show the difference between the light and the dark areas. So when you do a drawing um, and it doesn't have any tone in it, just a simple line drawing, it's flat and it doesn't have what we would refer to as depth in it. As soon as you start to add shading, that depth um, becomes apparent and the object or the landscape or the portrait whatever it is that you might be drawing starts to come to life it starts to look like a three-dimensional object and that's what shading does and that's why we're doing these tonal strips so that we can start to understand how to apply that level of shading to the to the different areas so looking at my tonal strip I'm happy with this to this. I think this is maybe just a fraction too light and I think that these two are a little bit too similar. So I'm just gonna use my biro. I'm gonna take another layer across the surface of this square, like so. Just to take that down just a tiny bit more. That looks pretty good to me now. And then I'm gonna do the same with this. And on this one, I'm gonna go back the other way that's going to help make this a little bit darker and again keeping that control and then i'm going to finish that off i'm going to just stop and have a little look at those and make sure that i'm happy with those steps which i think i am and then i'm going to leave that how it is so that's how you do your biro one